Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ, and I'm coming to you guys with my replay for week 8 of the UBC versus Reckless Bat, aka Nick, coach of the Texas Tyrantrums. I was actually live comming this battle, and my internet went out halfway through, so it really screwed up my whole commentary, obviously. I had to switch computers uh, because my main desktop doesn't have a Wi Fi card, and so I brought out my laptop, turned my cell phone into a Wi Fi hotspot, and uh, continued the battle. So, uh, I'll let you guys know the turn where the internet drops out. But as you can see, Nick has brought Mana Feet, Compelder, Mega Charizard X, Crobat, Seismitoad, and Electros. If you miss my team builder, I do have a defensive Rocky Helmet Landorus, defensive Rocky Helmet Quillfish. <laughs> Gotta check all those physical attackers. Um, I have an AV Gudra with enough uh, Spadef to take a Sub Zero Slammer from full. I have a Scarf Victini. I have a uh, Natural Gift Electric Weavile, and I have a Choice Scarf Decidueye. So, in terms of leads, I'm really expecting uh, probably the Crobat, and um, in that event, my Landorus is a pretty nice lead, so that's what I go ahead and lead off with. He actually leads his Conkeldur, which is kind of nice because uh, he's probably going to be fearing the Supersonic Sky Strike. so I'm just going to take this as an opportunity to set up my rocks immediately as the Electros now does come in. Um, I don't want to take an HP Ice from this thing, I don't have a way to kill it outright, um, and so I'm going to switch into my Gudra. And uh, he's going to make a really nice play and go for Volt Switch on my on my switch in here. So uh, that 6% damage is actually really crucial because now I can no longer survive uh, a Sub-Zero Slammer from a plus 3 Manaphy. But I didn't really have anything else to switch in there. I couldn't switch in Victini on like a potential HP Ice or anything like that um, because uh, I could have risked the knockoff. Anyway, I go into my Quillfish as he goes for knockoff with his Conk. Uh, take some Rocky Helmet Recoil, which is really nice for me. Uh, I'm going to go for a layer of spikes, and here I don't want to let this Manaphy set up for free. So I'm going to go for the T-Wave, and uh, this is quite nice for me. As I do land, I'm going to pivot into my Gudra. As he goes for the Energy Ball, as you guys are about to see. Um, and obviously I'm immune to that. But again, I don't want to uh, let my Gudra potentially go down here, so... On his Sub-Zero Slammer, I am going to switch out. I was like 99% uh, confident that that was the set he was going to bring. Like a uh, Water Move, Grass Move, uh, Sub-Zero Slammer was the perfect coverage versus my team. And um, now that my Victini is in here, uh, I can't really switch out. Um, so I just stay in, get off a Bolt Strike, do as much damage as possible. And now I can uh, Revenge Kill this uh, with just about anything. I go into my Landorus because it... Um, does not allow the like the Zard or the Crobat to come in for free. Like I could have killed this thing with Gudra, with uh, Decidueye or whatever, but I thought Landorus is just the overall best play because it's going to force in either the Seismitoad or the Eel. And for those, like I can at least go into my Gudra pretty safely. Um, like if he was uh, the Eel, like he could have potentially Volt Switched, uh, but uh, like like he did before. But he might not make that play twice in a row. So he does get up his rocks, which is a little unfortunate for me. My Victini is already dead, so it's not going to do a ton. Uh, I could have killed this thing outright with uh, Power Whip here, but um, that ends up not happening for me. And I uh, Dragon Tail him into the Zard, which is really stinky. But yeah, um, like I didn't expect him to stay in because uh, I guess I haven't shown a move on this thing necessarily, so he doesn't know that I'm packing a physical move set. If he was been watching my videos, he knows that I really like uh, physical Gudra, but uh, you know, it's hard to do a lot of scouting sometimes. Um, so, like, I thought maybe he would switch out, in which case Dragon Tail was good in that event, uh, but it doesn't work out for me uh, as uh, he goes for knockoff and uh, I bring in this Zard. Like, Zard is probably the like. Um, I guess there's not a, a good Mon that I could have brought in here uh, because Crobat would have uh, threatened me out, Conk would have threatened me out, and Zard would have threatened me out. Um, but like I just wanted to like get some extra hazard damage. That was really what I was thinking um, But uh, I'm gonna switch on out here, and I'm gonna go I believe into Quillfish and uh, Just get off the intimidate I'm not exactly sure what movie he's gonna go for probably Dragon Claw just because it hits the Gudra obviously um, This is in range to to a KO me So I'm gonna make another switch into my Landorus to get off a second intimidate and also rack up some potential Rocky Helmet damage on it. Uh, if I just... Well, I guess I couldn't have stayed in because he would have killed. But, um, like, a T-Wave was a potential option. 
Um, so now this thing is at 34% and it is in range of uh, the hazards that are on the field, which is really nice. So if there's any way I can keep those up on the field to prevent his Crobat from defogging, I'll be really happy. Uh, but we'll have to see if that ends up being the case. Um, and this is right where my internet went out. <laughs> so uh, I did the whole switcheroo and uh, came back and I figured on this play he was probably going to be going into the eel because my earthquake is kind of obvious. So I uh, click Toxic anticipating that, and I do catch the eel on the switch in, which is pretty nice. Um, so I still don't have a great way to deal with this eel, especially with my Gudra's Assault Fest being knocked off. Uh, but that's the only play that I really have. If he uh, decides to, to Volt Switch again, uh, I'm kind of in a tough spot. I kind of just have to sack my Gudra to any move that he goes for uh, from Conk or from Crobat or whoever. But he ends up just HP icing, which is nice for me. Like, that made sense because he wanted to hit my Landorus. And um, I'm able to, to a KO this thing uh, with Power Whip. And on the next turn, I actually go for a Fire Punch. Uh, not as a prediction or anything, but because I knew it would kill uh, after the toxic damage. And I didn't want to miss. So that's what we end up doing here. And uh, the Crobat is going to come in on this next turn. And my, my uh, Gudra does not have any move that can hit the Crobat, unfortunately. Maybe I could have run Rock Slide over uh, over Earthquake, because that also hits Zard, kind of, like if I needed to predict a switch or something like that. Uh, so that really stinks. But I ended up just sacking my, my Quillfish, um, because um, I didn't really have another play. I didn't want to my, let my Landorus take extra damage or anything like that. I go for the T-Wave in case he wants to stay in and uh, go for Roost or something like that, or go into a Zard, but he brings in the Conk, and uh, obviously it's already burned, so it can't get T-Waved. Missing out on that damage is actually pretty critical, as we'll see later. So he goes for the Mock Punch, and uh, takes out my uh, my Quillfish. I go into my Lando, and uh, he knows that I'm Rocky Helmet now. He knows that I'm not Supersonic Sky Strike, but he is going to end up switching out his Conk. I click Psychic. Um, because it hits the Conk hardest, and it also hits this incoming Crobat. Um, he was probably expecting the ground move. He didn't think I'd go for a rock move, uh, but joke's on him. I went for the psychic move and do a ton of damage to this thing, which is really nice. And um, I just end up sacking my Gudra because he's going to go for a U-turn, and uh, that's going to allow me to get the momentum instead of him. Uh, I like If I had stayed in there, I'm pretty sure that that Crobat uh, was in range of dying to Helmet, or at least it would have been really close. Um, but, you know, he knew that I was couldn't afford to let my Lando take damage. Uh, so I bring in my Weavile because Ice Punch uh, should should kill. I'm actually not sure if it d does or not, because my, uh, my because I was on my other computer, I didn't have my calcs up. Um, I just had to go off of the default sets, and... I'm going to look it up right now, actually, um, because, uh, like, the default set is uh, banded, <laughs> but I obviously wasn't banded. I was not a boosting item. Um, I was an adamant uh, Wakan Berry, but uh, Ice Punch to a non-invested Zard does 39% minimum, so it was guaranteed to kill the Zard there. Um, and so I kind of wish I had clicked Knock Off here, but it actually doesn't make a big difference. I go for the Ice Punch, do 29% to this. The Calc is telling me that a Knock Off should kill, but again, I'm looking at a Banded set. And so um, I go for Knock Off, and he survives on 8 HP, and I'm like, oh shoot, this is not good. Um, but he actually goes for Ice Punch, expecting my Switch Out. So that's great for me. Um, I definitely have no complaints about how that turned out. Um, and so I do end up taking out the Toad, which is really nice. Um, he's going to bring in his Conk next, and this is a tricky play because uh, me switching out on his Mock Punch is so obvious. But it's not really a risk that I'm willing to take because Ice Shard does kill Crobat and does kill Zard at this range. Um, so uh, I do end up going into my Decidueye because if he does go for a Mock Punch, then uh, I'll be able to take that. Obviously because I'm immune. And um, he ends up making the prediction and going for Ice Punch. So he tried to make the prediction on the previous turn. Uh, this time he makes the prediction again, and it does work out for him. So real nice play on his part. Uh, he is at 54% HP. And uh, just a thing to note, my uh, Landorus does like 46 to 54 with Psychic. So I need probably one more turn of burn to give myself a good shot of killing this thing. 
or I can, uh, if I can somehow set up rocks, uh, that'll put me in a really good spot. Um, but I do go into my Lando, because I know if I hit this thing with a Psychic and he does stay in, that uh, Ishard wins the game. Um, and so I go for the Psychic, and he ends up bringing in his Zard. Uh, I have no way to, to kill this Zard with Psychic unless I crit, and uh, he does survive. And then this is a tricky situation here. Uh, I, I think in retrospect my correct play was clicking rocks. Uh, the reason being, if he uh, attacks me, he's going to die to Helmet, and uh, there's no point in clicking an attacking move. If he goes for Roost, uh, I get up my rocks, and then I can uh, kill with EQ on the next turn anyway. Unless he's like Roost with Wisp or something like that. Um, so like in those two cases, rocks is correct. If he is set up, then I still... I don't know, it's a tougher play if he goes for some sort of setup move. Um, because, like, I can still kill this thing, I can probably live any one hit. Um, and if not, like, he, as long as he's not roosting, I can kill with the Ice Shard. But if he does do that and my Lando goes down, I lose to Conk. So, in fear of the setup move, I guess more than anything else, I do click the Earthquake. Uh, but he unfortunately goes for the Dragon Claw dies to the helmet and uh, I hit EQ and there's no target on the field. So um, now the Crobat's going to come in and I know that if I have any chance of winning this I need my Lando to uh, hit the Conkelter with that Psychic. So I end up sacking my Weavile hoping that he clicks Brave Bird because my since my Weavile is at a good range of HP uh, there's a good shot that he dies to recoil which is exactly what happens here. And then, now we're left in a situation where it's Landorus versus uh, Conkelder, and we really need the, the max roll here. There's almost no other way that we can win this. We could obviously win with a crit as well. Um, and if he wasn't max HP invested, uh, we, we, we could have won, but uh, there's no reason for him not to be uh, max HP invested. And so, we actually double down. It's a 0-0, zero, zero, but it's a loss for us and a win for Nick. So... Quite a wild game, indeed. Uh, stinks about the the Wi-Fi, but uh, you know, interrupting the game. But at the end of the day, like Nick made the plays that he needed to at the end of the game. Switching in the Zard on the Psychic was really great, and um, you know, I just didn't click rocks when I should have, and uh, so all props to him. All props to him. That's going to put him at uh, four and four, and then also puts us at four and four. Uh, but luckily, we have a plus 7 differential, whereas Nick has a minus 1. So we're still technically ahead. But, uh, like, if you look at this, uh, I mean, you guys can't see the sheet. But right now, Turkey's sitting at 4 and 3. I don't know if he's played his game yet or not. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think he's played it by the time that I've played this. So if he wins, obviously he's ahead. If he loses, there's a chance that we're tied with him, depending upon how much he loses by. Um, I know that uh, a Levine MA's team, uh, it was uh, his team. He had to drop out, and uh, now it's being taken over by Daniel. His team, I believe, is 4-4. Four and four. Uh, Jonah, a.k.a. Isolate, he's at 4-3. and three, So depending upon how his match goes, he could be 5-3 and three or 4-4. Four and four. Uh, uh, Carney Hobo's team is sitting at 3 and 4. If they win, they'll go up to 4 and 4, but we'll still have a better differential. So, you, and you guys get my point. There's a ton of teams that are sitting in this, like, 4 and 4 range. Potentially 5 and 3, but, um, a lot of 4 and 4s. And, like, we're lucky that we have a good differential and that we can be on top of them. But, uh, we need to win some games. <laughs> um, if we need to go... Probably two and two minimum, but better off three and one in the last four games of this season in order to make playoffs. If we don't make playoffs after last season, uh, I'm going to be really disappointed because I think I have a great team. Uh, I think it's really great, and um, like it's a playoff capable team. So cross your fingers uh, that we can pull it back in the next week. We do go up against our buddy North Vader next week. He's taking over for Verd's team, uh, the Tampa Bay Frogadiers. He's now replacing it with the Scarborough Staraptors. And uh, he and I bought, uh, fought off in UPC Season 3. He actually got the better of me in the game that we played. 
Uh, he did a really nice job of bluffing a Scarf Hydreigon and uh, ended up taking out my team. And um, I, you know, it was nice that I went on to win that league, but I always wanted another chance to battle Narth because uh, I need some revenge for for how he beat me. So, anyway. That'll be coming up next week. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. Hope you enjoyed this battle. And if you did, please uh, go back to the channel and check out my other gaming and Pokemon content. So until the next time, I'll see you guys later.